Hi everyone, my name is Martha. I'm a relationship counselor and clinical sexologist. In this video, I will be reacting to a post that I saw in uh, The Independent. So this is the second time I'm doing a reaction video from a post that I saw on The Independent. So check out the other one. So this particular one says, um, happily married man with kids, wondering if the wife will accept his young and wild female colleague for sex. Okay, so actually talking about possibly a threesome. Uh, so this appeared yesterday. It originally appeared in uh, NUS Whispers uh, Facebook page. This, uh, just to give you some context, so this person is 38 and the colleague is 25, uh, recently explores ad adoration. So it is definitely not just him trying to sexually groom this person. This person is attracted to him. And just because someone is attracted to you, you doesn't mean that you have to act on it. But he's thinking of acting on it. So he says he's tempted to start something um, and... Um, um, thinking of actually a friends with benefits situation um, so no one finds out meaning the wife and the, the office will not find out and nobody gets hurt meaning he, he already thinks that the wife can get hurt so he's still thinking about it so then he says but um, because this person is young and easily swayed there's a possibility may want more than a friends with benefits situation so he doesn't want to rock the boat and can never keep anything discreet. So then he has the fear of it being found out, knowing that there may be consequences. So um, it's, uh, this is irrelevant, but he's still talking about it. Uh, the woman being comparable to his wife, being young, not say very pretty, okay, girl next door type and great body. So the situation, the solution, he came out with this solution to like he won the best of all worlds is uh, he's going to see if he can incorporate her as a third person in a marriage instead. Okay, so what happens is, uh, well, you know, the fact that she's young and wild, you know, is like high chance, I guess. So he claims the wife did talk about the possibility of adding a 3P, a third person into the sex or relationship before while they were in bed. Um, but she's gen still generally a conservative person. So how can I go ahead and handle, notice the question, how can I go ahead and handle this situation to enable the best out of this situation for me? This is all me, 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 me. Okay, this is all about me, um, not about talking about the wife, not talking about any consequences. Okay, so got the bashing of his life. Okay, instead of getting sympathetic advice, I don't know why this person would get any sympathetic advice because it's very much about me, me, me. Um, got the bashing of his life. People calling him shameless, deplorable. Another one saying, what do you think if this was your daughter who were in that situation? Okay, people asking him, like, how would you feel if it was daughter, your wife who wanted a third party? And uh, people, most people are just saying, don't do it. Okay, so um, pretty much agree with this uh, person, Kelly Theo. Uh, there are possible consequences, okay? Uh, this person... The things can go away. You this person can go to HR and report you. You might lose your job, and the wife can leave you with two kids. Tell them how shameless that you are. So this is very much like a soap opera, right? And your wife may be kidding about this three P. So no woman can uh, tahan. No one can take it uh, when you see another man, your man, and um, another girl having a go in front of you. So uh, please rein in your immoral thoughts before your life is turned upside down. Okay, and uh, all these uh, different reaction uh, comments. Okay, so this is my reaction. <laughs> so before that, I want to say I, through the years, of course, I have worked with and met with um, people who are thinking of cheating and people who have cheated, whether it's a male or whether it's a female. So there are three possible reasons why people cheat and uh, or thinking of cheating and um, I just share with you my thoughts. The first one is a uh, FOMO, fear of missing out. They are um, feeling that um, they they want the best of this world. You know, I see other people having all kinds of experiences, wife at home, girlfriend on the side, and uh, all kinds of different um adventures and uh, they, they, they feel that life is slipping them by and they are afraid that uh, they have missed out on something and uh, so they are envious of other people. So that's the first um, possible reason. The second is they are in a miserable and unhappy relationship. Instead of dealing with the situation with their partner, instead of going for counselling, they are thinking that they can farm out this category of their sex life, which is their sex part and uh, basically just uh, 
kind of sweep things under the carpet. So I call the second category of people farming it out. The third kind of people um, are the people who are cheating and thinking of cheating because they feel entitled. They feel that they deserve it. They feel that um, uh, maybe even to an extent of wanting revenge. So which one do you think uh, this person is? Do you think this person is uh, having FOMO uh, once what other people have? Uh, do you think the person is um, um, the second one, which is um, they are actually wanting to farm things out, but he said that he has a great sex life with his wife, or the third one uh, being he's entitled. So there's only one correct answer in this situation based on what I've read. This person actually feels entitled. This person is selfish, very selfish, only thinking of himself um, and also thinking of exploiting the younger colleague um, in Singapore, 25-year-old person would be actually more or less uh, fresh out of university. And uh, even though uh, this person would have reached, of course, obviously the age of consent, the issue is that just because they have the physical maturity of a 25-year-old, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have the intellectual and emotional uh, capacity of uh, somebody who is of that equivalent age, say, in another country, because um, by and large in Singapore, most people are pretty much uh, sheltered by their family, um, and uh, so they are busy studying. So they may not have that emotional maturity when it comes to navigating relationships. Um, so yes, so this person is, is basically completely feeling entitled and wanting the best of himself. And um, rather than everybody um, attacking him, uh, and saying it's immoral and things like that. Uh, so bear in mind that the wife actually said uh, she would be open to this idea. So granted that she was talking this when she was in a relaxed state in bed, just contemplating. So rather than crowdsourcing this by people who are moralizing to him, I would say, just ask your wife, did you actually mean it when you said uh, you are open to a 3P? Just, just, just bring it up to her, okay? Just bring it up to her and uh, it could be all systems go or it could be all systems shut down. Um, it's, it's a good idea to like not want to cheat on your wife and uh, to really see about having like consensual sexual adventures uh, with your wife. I feel that uh, nobody should actually tell you it's wrong. Um, it's your life to navigate as long as nobody in the, in, um, the relationship is hurt. The keyword is nobody is hurt and it is consensual, meaning that your wife also doesn't feel coerced or pressurized to say yes, okay? So this came out of her own vol volition uh, in bed when she's relaxed. But the wife is uh, from this article, also a conservative type. So it's quite different like talking about it when you're relaxed and just playing with the idea versus like really serious about it. So I would say the first thing is rather than uh, like sit on it and like thinking about it, uh, and uh, being all confused, why don't you just ask your wife? Just ask your wife, are you really open to it when you said that you were open to it? Okay, so the, this, is, uh, this is just one part of my answer. The next part is, if your wife is open to this, is it a good idea to get involved with your colleague knowing that uh, if things uh, go sour, you have to see this person. Like, do you really want to keep seeing this person, even if this person is young and, and willing and uh, really like admires you? Uh, why, why can't you just go and get somebody else? Get somebody else who is also willing, who is also young, who is not your colleague, okay? Who actually really knows what this means because there are consequences to your work environment. You are turning what is maybe a very positive work environment to something that uh, can actually make things really um, dicey. And uh, what more? Your reputation, okay? You only have one reputation. When you ruin your reputation, your professional rep reputation, this can actually, Singapore is such a small place, um, it can actually ruin your professional career. So really think about the personal side. Is If wife really is okay with it, you say okay, but is it really okay? Like really, really, really okay? Ask her. But when it comes to the professional side, colleague, do you really want to get into a situation where it actually turns around, what is personal turns around and starts to affect your professional reputation. Okay, that's the second part of my answer. The third part of my answer is, yes, what other people said. She's young, she is probably naive, and uh, you are in a power differentiation situation where you are her senior, you are older, you should know better, and um, you actually ethically, not illegally, but ethics, the ethics of being 
the higher up, the senior? Are you going to hold yourself to a higher standard of behavior? Okay, so that's the, that's the third part. Even if you want to open up your relationship, does it have to be your colleague? Does it have to be her? Does, you know, you can always like meet other people and you and your wife could go and meet other people and then um, introduce this person into your life. So keeping your professional and personal life separate. So the professional idea, yes, yeah, so you have this uh, colleague who is into you, right? Um, but it's younger, okay? So what if um, she really knows what she's doing? Let's just not assume a 25-year-old is not capable of uh, really thinking through things. You have to think through things for yourself, whether this is going to affect your work. And um, uh, this uh, young person, um, I'm sorry to say this, but just because she says she admires you or even has fallen in love with you, it doesn't mean you have to do anything about it, you know? It doesn't mean you have to act on it. It needs to be mutual, okay? Even if you like this person, you also have use your prefrontal cortex, <laughs> use your logical brain to ask yourself, is this a good idea? Is this a good idea even if this person likes me and I'm also attracted to this person? Just because you're attracted to someone doesn't mean you have to act on it, okay? How many times have has it been when so many, um, I've all these people like saying that they admire me or I'm sexy or beautiful or whatever, okay? You can disagree, I don't care. But the thing is when they express their admiration for me, they... They could be all confused with what they see on screen and they assume certain things about me, even though they don't really know me. And then they think that they have fallen in love with me. Okay. So it's really also not just about what their attraction is. It's also about where it sits with, with me. Because I do know, um, because I am a counselor, we do, we do go for ethics training that we know we are actually in a position of authority, we are in a position of power, that they are actually coming to us really vulnerable. So there is a code of ethics for counsellors that you do not get in any romantic or sexual relationship with your clients. And I have abided by this for the last 12 years. I have never gotten into any romantic or sexual relationship with any of my clients. And it is so important because Singapore is such a small place. But has there been situation where um, clients attracted to me and I'm also attracted to them, yes. But I choose not to act on it because I really value how the nature of my work is that they actually are projecting things onto me and what they see is not real, it's not real. So your colleague is, um, uh, is confusing adoration uh, of, your, of your work ethics, of your work um, strengths, uh, maybe how intelligent you are, how capable you are with uh, emotions. And so that is actually very... Um, that is very flattering and it's really nice to know when someone admires you. And sometimes it's also okay to just let it stay there. The fourth thing I want to say is uh, look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, are you going to be somebody who is okay with um, um, plotting on your colleague? I know you haven't done anything yet, but you are scheming away. You're scheming away on the fact that she's young and uh, vulnerable and uh, uh, words like uh, wow, okay, just because somebody um, in a moment of weakness expressed express, uh, adoration and admiration for you, it doesn't necessarily mean they want to do anything about it. So just as I ask you, you ask your wife, you can also ask this colleague and then make it clear, make it clear like I've thought about it and um, we stay colleagues, okay, it's, it's my advice to you. Uh, very strong advice because you only have one reputation, okay? And when it comes to work, keep it clean. Keep it clean. Work is work. Be professional, okay? Don't be one of those people who creates the toxic environment at work. Don't do sexual grooming. Don't be targeting your colleagues. Don't do sexual harassment at work. Don't be accused of, of, of all these things that actually makes it really, really uncomfortable uh, for an unsafe for any woman. So with that, um, I hope I have given uh, enough advice. The first one is ask your wife if she means what she says. The second one is really think about your professional reputation. The third is uh, really think about, um, um, about things from this point of view of this uh, woman, whether she really is uh, able to give consent. And, uh, and like, you know, even if you want to open up the re relationship, there are so many other ways that you can do that. And uh, the fourth one is, can you look at yourself in the mirror and actually be proud of what you, you are, what kind of person that you are? I think the thing with cheating is because you can get away with, no one can hurt, but guess what? You can't park 
you can't separate your personal and work self and just say, I just leave this at home and then I just go to work. And, and when it's all embroidered um, and you get into this whirlwind and you, you have all these like um, uh, whirlwind of, uh, uh, of, of romance, you know, um, maybe what you're really lacking, fifth one, is you're lacking the spice and excitement that you used to have. So rather than uh, seek it out in other um, um, adventures and uh, playing with fire, uh, really acknowledge what it really is. The sex is good, but maybe you're, you're missing on the, the, the passion, the, the spark, the, the, uh, the fire that you used to have with your wife. Because now, you, now she, she, even though she may look physically okay, but the charge, the energy between the two of you is different. So go back and uh, look at the fundamentals of, of um, the relationship. Uh, look at how strong your relationship is, how, how it's sparking you or not. And just, just look at what it really is rather than do this second thing that I mentioned just now, which is uh, some people who are thinking of cheating are actually farming out a problem. So maybe you think it's all okay, but if you really look deeper, maybe it's not really as okay as you claim. And that's what I see in a lot of my clients. So don't be one of those people who just look at the grass is greener on the other side and then just regret. Uh, don't be a selfish person and just be thinking of only from your, your own perspective and not thinking about what is in the best interest of everybody involved. And uh, so, yeah, I, I hope this uh, has um, given you some additional food for thought. So this has been Martha of Eros Coaching.